Welcome back to another episode of Modded Motors. Today we're gonna to be talking about the five things we hate about the Alfa Romeo Giulia. This is a great video if you haven't bought one yet and you're looking yep. to buy one. There's some cons about the vehicle. And also, if you own one, you can either agree or disagree or maybe put some other things in the comments of what you guys do not like. Yep. Nonetheless, none of these things would stop us from buying an Alfa Romeo Giulia. And I'll say this again throughout the whole entire video, but I'm gonna say it again right now. None of these things would stop us from buying an Alfa. Um, with the cons that comes with the vehicle, I still think an Alfa is a great value for the vehicle that it is. So I will say purchase one. Uh, but yeah, we do have some things that I've owned two now since 2017 or 2016 really, um, that I've noticed throughout the car that's not horrible but just pestering all of our videos aren't received well but we do appreciate the people that have reached out to us and let us know how well we're doing because you know you keep us going but again if you're not subscribed and you're looking down below and it's still option to subscribe that's just poor judgment on your part <laughs> go ahead and subscribe right <laughs> Like we said, we're gonna keep saying this, five things that we hate, but would not deter us from purchasing the car. It's easy to call out the negatives um, from this car, but after owning two of them, I enjoy the experience of owning an Alpha, the handling, the power that it pushes, even for the four cylinder. So I personally would always say to purchase one, it's the best bang for your buck. Yeah. That's just my that's just my opinion. But you know, we are here to point out some of the cons. Um, Crystal coming from an 08 Honda has a little bit of a different experience. Um, she has a higher standard of reliability because she threw it through water, mud. Honda will take you places, okay? Help me, I'm poor. So with more electronics, with more features, you are bound to have more issues, especially yeah. it's the first time in 30 years in 2017 where it came to the States. So, you know, it was prone to have some development issues. Some of these things we've broken down into sections. Beep, 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 beep. So it has a few things inside that certain section. Software and electronics. That was the most annoying thing. That is the most, I think I've heard the biggest complaint yeah. about the alphas is the softwares and electronics. I kind of combined them too because I wanted to get through more points. So I've noticed if you do anything to these cars that they do not like, immediately the cars go into limp mode. Um, when I tried brake boosting for the first time, the car hated that, it immediately went into limp mode. Yeah. When I tried sliding the car the first time, immediately went into limp no, mode. Sir. It does not like anything that it's not supposed to do. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> The auto start and stuff like never works in these cars. Uh, our other car as well. Um, and oh, it, you work in your car either? Mm -hmm. oh. it just go it just goes out a lot. Um, so the auto start and stop, you'll see it come up a lot in in these cars. Um, like it's not working or it'll flash a warning light. It doesn't really do anything other than like once you come to a stop, obviously shuts off the motor for efficiency, all that good stuff. Um, so it's not a really a big deal. I hate that it turns on and off anyways and I have to turn it off every time I turn on the car. Yeah. So it's not a big thing, but it is something to know because it is annoying to deal with. Speakers, this is my, it's so annoying. <laughs> I mean, I guess I can just do Bluetooth, whatever, but like, it's still annoying. So yeah, so the speakers, essentially what she's talking about is when you plug the speakers into the USB port for the iPhone, um, it comes through like crackly. Yeah. Um, we've changed the wire, we've changed, you know, phones. Um, that's not it at all. So we have a base model. So you it may doesn't not- doesn't happen with Bluetooth though, so. Yeah, it does not happen with Bluetooth. Moral of the story, buy a higher model. And the next thing about the electronics, I guess this is really more of a, a design feature that Alpha had. So when you're trying to drive uh, this car and you put it in reverse, you have no accessibility to the AC controls. Now, I don't know if they fix this in later models, but it doesn't matter if you go to TA all the way up. Once it goes into reverse, the AC control unit doesn't work until you put it back into drive. It's very small. I mean, you only have a car in reverse for a short period of time, but it is still annoying to but deal with. if you with. live in Texas and it's 100 plus degrees, it's a problem. <laughs> Something electrical is usually going wrong with these cars. Now, personally, I'll give you the pro to this. I don't buy an Alfa Romeo Giulia for the music, I buy it for the drivability of the car, the way it handles, uh, the way the car is overall. I don't buy it for specifically for music or anything like that. Um, yeah. So, you know, Bluetooth always works, but the infotainment sometimes gets spotty. It's, uh, it sometimes doesn't work like right. It's a little laggy, if that makes right. sense. But again, what do you deter us from purchasing the vehicle? Nope. The second thing that we hate most about this car, so as we just said, you buy these cars for the driving experience. This is a car where you can you know, it's a real, real drive sports sedan. Uh, that's what it's advertised as. Um, so as it comes from, you know, Italy, as it comes to the States and it's here, you know, they advertise the quadrifoglio spinning and doing all this crazy stuff. Yeah. You can't even do a burnout in these cars. You can't <laughs> slide these cars. 
there's no way to even turn off the traction control. Um, so the second thing that we're talking about is mechanical restrictions. Um, the fact that we can't turn off traction control, the fact that the rev limiter is locked. Now I get the health of the motor, the rev limiter is locked, so that makes a little bit of sense. For me, the traction control doesn't make sense to have that on and not being able to turn it off. Um, and, and you know, I have the Euro Compulsion uh, Phase 2 tune, which gives a little bit more uh, accessibility to uh, release the traction a little bit. Yeah. Um, it won't go automatic into limp mode, but it doesn't fix the, the problem at all. Now, we have race mode coming in uh, for this car. Um, so we're going to try to install that. From what I've heard from Quadrifoglio owners, um, you still run into issues even doing a burnout. Now you can slide the car, but burnout, it's still, you know, the traction control locks the tires up. So the only way to get around that, I've heard, is to put the car into service mode. But once you put it into service mode, obviously it's going to go automatically to natural, which is almost like a limp mode. Uh, I'm pretty sure all your lights are going to come on. Uh, that's like a cheaty code away, I guess, around it, but that's, I mean, you don't want to drive your car like that. That's just annoying. Yeah. Um, we've even tried hacking the system. Have you seen it in our other videos? It's shorting the, you know, obviously the tricking the system, putting the battery back. You probably shouldn't do that. It's probably not healthy as I've heard because people went in on me, <laughs> but you know, that's another way to hack around it. But the third thing that we're going to talk about is aftermarket parts. Now for the tuning portion of it, I'm set in stone with Euro Compulsion. Euro Compulsion is all in this car from the we intake. Love Euro Compulsion. Um, but as far as different tunes, not that I'm looking to switch, there's not that many options for different types of tunes out there. Um, there's maybe like a handful, like five. I come from the JDM world where there's a lot of different options out there. So it just stinks to see that there's not that many tuners involved with the Alfa Romeo brand. Really, when I talk about aftermarket parts, I'm really uh, referring to the exterior portions of the vehicle. Yeah. Um, so really, if you're gonna do like a spoiler, there's only like Really, everybody does the same quadrifolio spoiler. There's only other few spoilers you can choose from. Uh, you know, the sides, the side skirts, you're really only choosing one side skirt. There's not really that many options. I guess so that's that's a bad thing about it. There's not a people, enough people yet invested into the Alfa Romeo brand, so you can't really customize it. Now, yeah. your real Alfa purists will tell you not to touch the car at all. Yeah, we learned the hard way. Hard way. Uh, they'll actually bully you into buying real <laughs> carbon fiber parts if you start a YouTube channel, so <laughs> <laughs> there's that. <laughs> but no, uh, no, for us, you know, there's, there's just not really that many options to be different and unique with your vehicle, which again, if I'm coming from the tuning world, from FRSs to Supras, you know, there's obviously a lot of variety of everything. You can do anything from different spoilers, different side skirts of any different variation, different headlights. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a whole market of it, right? So I understand that there's not gonna be that many options because it is still technically like a newer car for the States. Um, but yeah, that, that's only downfall to it. So the fourth thing that we're gonna talk about here, and this is a sensitive subject as well, is resale of these vehicles um, so if you're buying one of these cars it's good for the purchaser it's not so good for the seller i know this because the value of my first juliet went all the way down the drain as quick as possible you may not have this problem in italy or overseas uh, but you for sure have this problem here in the states because there's not the brand's not that well known here anymore um, it's a it's a problem for people to buy them and really only dealers are buying them and they're gonna buy them at a wholesale price which is typically cheaper a lot cheaper um, so it just brings down the value as far as uh, the resale value um, so you can find really good deals out there if you're trying to get into one of these cars now if you buy an Alfa Romeo I hope that the intention is to keep this for a very long time I think you'll really want to keep it for a very long time but the thought process is keep it for longer it, it'll pay off you know as far as equity back but if you're buying one of these for equity it's not the right purchase, to be honest. <laughs> so the last thing we're gonna talk about is dealerships. <laughs> and again, this is only for most likely the states. Um, overseas, you guys might not have this issue, but I'm gonna use uh, the Dallas area for an example. So for Dallas, we only have two dealerships. We have Essence Maserati, and we have Dallas Fort Worth uh, Alfa Romeo, the Alfa Romeo dealership in Fort Worth. Um, yep. For me, I hate Essence Maserati. Uh, they treated me very poorly. Uh, they blacklisted one of my cars. Uh, just horrible, horrible experience. I personally would never go to that, uh, that dealership ever in my life. This car will never touch that dealership. That's just my personal experience. Now, my only other option is Fort Worth Alfa Romeo. Um, their customer service is a lot better, but their sales team is extremely pushy. Um, they even tried selling me another Alfa. They just made no sense when they tried selling me another Julia that I already own. But anyways, uh, their service department is better. I feel like they're not as experienced as Essence Maserati, but I'd rather deal with them than dealing with Essence. Um, 
Now, when you go to Fort Worth, the only problem is the last time we went for a service, we went for a 40,000 mile service. Um, and it was only supposed to be a $600 service. It ended up coming out to $1,200, which is double what they quoted us. And they didn't even tell us until we came to the counter. They charge us for breaks without even telling us. Uh, it's not an issue because I was going to, I would have done it anyways, but would have liked to know that you were doing these types of things. And Just I could have. a courtesy. Right, a courtesy. Like please tell me so when it comes down to dealer options there's really there's really only two for us and i've heard some extremes of people driving three four five hours to get to their nearest alfa romeo dealership um some people aren't savvy with changing their oil or savvy with working on their car so their only option is to take it to a dealership because that's what they feel comfortable with um so what i would do if you're looking to purchase one of these cars is two things and this is just my opinion is one find your closest alfa romeo dealership yes get comfortable with working on your car if you don't have one here. Um, and the second thing is if there is only one that's really far away, they might know that and they might try to upcharge you. So the second thing I would try to do, go to Auto Trader for a car that you're maybe interested in, grab the VIN for that car, call your dealership, ask them what a, you know, an oil change cost, ask them what a 20 or 30,000 mile service costs, just get some quotes, just to make sure they're not price gouging and that you know that it's a, a reputable dealership. If you are looking to purchase one of these cars, I highly recommend going up in model, going with something with a limited SIP, like a TI, TI model. Even they have the all wheel drive versions, um, stuff with better sound system, better seats. Um, so I would, as, if you can get more, um, go more, but even if you get a base model, it's not, they're all running the same motor. They're all the way up until the Quadrifoglio. The Quadrifoglio is the only one that has obviously the V6 and all that good stuff. That's another thing. If you're gonna afford a Quadrifoglio, don't buy this, go buy a Quadrifoglio. <laughs> I, I saw somebody asking, what's the difference between a Quadrifoglio and the, and the Facebook group? What's the difference between a Quadrifoglio and this? Is it worth it? Pfft, yeah, it's worth it. <laughs> Please go buy that instead. Don't buy this. Anyways, if you're looking for a sign to buy one of these cars. This is your sign. This is your sign. Buy one of these cars. Highly recommend Alpha. Highly recommend the Alpha brand. Um, <clears throat> We're gonna, I'm gonna give you a pro to any one of these cons, right? So software and electronics, one, if there's a fault, if there's something faulty in the car, these cars have a warranty up to 50,000 miles from the factory. It can be replaced in a factory warranty if it's something that's replaced in a factory warranty, which we've had a lot of parts on here replaced um, from Fort Worth uh, Alfa Romeo. Uh, the, second to, the second thing to that is there is a lot of software updates that Alfa, the office also puts out. We take the car in, software updates, fixes a lot of issues. So even though that is a negative, there are uh, there solutions. Are there are solutions to that, yeah. <clears throat> so like the Euro Compulsion 2 that we mentioned, that has the rev limiter that we're obviously able to rev it in neutral, which we don't really do, but it's nice to have. Also, it removes the traction control a little bit. Um, and race mode will hopefully eventually let us be able to slide the car, so that fixes that issue. And when we talk about aftermarket parts, you can low-key find stuff on eBay, um, don't on post Amazon. About it, though. <laughs> don't, don't post about it, just put it on your car. <laughs> um, but you can find stuff on eBay, you can find stuff pretty inexpensive. Resale, again, bad for you if you're a seller great for you if you're a buyer so if you're trying to get into one of these cars you can get get them at a really affordable rate yeah. um, like again this one for all, for, for 18,000 I'll buy I'll buy this all over again um, we've heard things about EV maybe them going more EV I don't know where they're gonna go with this uh, only time will tell but at the end of the day there may be a solution for that but for now do do your due diligence do your research yes, um, and look at uh, look at some of the dealerships around now if you feel comfortable working on your own car that solves all your problems sure if you've never driven one before you do anything, before any of these things kind of push you away, go take one of these cars, go drive it, and get the experience for yourself. All these things that I've mentioned can be either worked around or fixed. I'm a huge believer in the brand. Like I said, I've owned it since 2016, and I will start this, end this video by saying I have never ran into an issue where my car has left me stranded. So no matter what you read from you know the reports, um, it's never personally left me stranded, and I know a lot of other people in the Facebook groups can occur to that. Make sure you guys subscribe. Uh, to get the most up-to-date content. Like I said, we have the super video, which a super video is coming up right after this video. Huh. Thank you guys again once more uh, for all the love and support. We're halfway to monetization, if you guys care to know. Um, so we greatly appreciate all the love and support that we've been getting online uh, through our comments, through our DMs, every which way. Thank you, um, and we'll see you guys early next week.